Everybody, welcome back to another fun and exciting algebra class. Today we are going to be in chapter number 11, lesson number 9, and we are going to be solving rational equations. What have we been doing? I mean, you say, I thought we've been doing that. Well, we've been solving rational expressions. The difference is an equation has an equal sign. So the only difference with what we're doing today, we're going to use all of the methods that we've been using and finding LCD, combining like terms, adding and subtracting, all those types of things. Um, but we're just going to kind of now add taking it to the other side, solving for X, all that good stuff. Okay. So let's jump into it. We are on page 338 to page 338. There are two different methods for solving rational expressions. In my opinion, this one is the method that's easiest. Now, just because it's easiest doesn't mean we can always use it. It would be nice if we could always use it, but sometimes we can't use it. And I'll explain to you when we can and when we can't use it. The proportion method basically says this. If we take these things, and let me, let me show you this example right here. If we take this, and this is called cross multiplication, and we multiply it, and we multiply that, these two things will be equal, okay? It's a proportional principle. So um, let, let's take a, a simple proportion. One over two equals two over four. Okay, it's a simple proportion, but it's a true proportion. In other words, one half equals two fourths. And that's true, because if we reduce two fourths and we divide each one of those by two, we get one half. So it does equal, they are equal to each other. They're all, they are what's called proportional. Now, in, in um, rational expressions, those are, if those are equal, then that means that they're also proportional. So now watch this. If we do this here, if we do this multiply here, we do two times two, whoops, sorry, two times two equals four. And if we do this right here, one times four equals four. Look, our solution is the same, 4 equals 4. That's always true in proportions. You will always get, when you do, this is called this is called the means, okay? And this is called the extremes. And maybe you remember that from 8th grade math. But the means times the extremes always is equal. Well, let's use that principle right there. And let's do this one. Let's say, okay, these ones are always going to equal these ones when we multiply. So let's do it, let's multiply. X minus five, so this is this one right here, um, times, put parentheses on it, X minus four. Okay, so that's these ones right here. Then we need to do these ones right here. So we'll do equals X plus four times X minus one. Put parentheses around it. What have we created? Well, we have created a very manageable problem for us. We've been doing these for a long time. We have two FOIL problems, okay? So we just wanna FOIL these and then just solve and move stuff to the other side and do all the things that we know how to do. So first, that's gonna give us X squared. Uh, the outers, that's gonna give us minus four X. The inners is gonna give us minus five X. And then the last is going to give us positive 20. And that's going to equal, firsts gonna, going to give us x squared, outers going to give us minus 1x, inners is going to give us plus 4x, and then lasts are going to give us uh, negative 4. If you don't know how to FOIL, like if that just blew your mind right there, um, you need to go back and watch the lesson on FOILing. I did that quickly because you should know how to FOIL. Everything I did right there, you should have been like right with me. You should have been getting the answer even before I got the answer as I was doing that, okay? Now, so we've got it all foiled out. We've got it all multiplied. Now we want to combine like terms. So we can combine these like terms and these like terms. So we're going to get x squared minus 9x plus 20 equals x squared. When we combine these, we get positive 3x minus 4. Now, we haven't really seen one like this yet, but here's what you would do with this. 
what you would do is you would just start taking stuff to the other side. Just start solving for X. Watch what happens to this one. All right, so once you cancel those, you would just keep going. So the ultimate goal here is that you get X on one side and the numbers on the other side. So let's take this number over here and let's take this X over here, okay? So minus 20, minus 20. Um, we're going to subtract 3x, so that's going to cancel. We're going to subtract 3x and subtract 3x, so that's going to cancel. So what are we left with? We're left with this and this. Um, so 9 minus 3, that's going to give us negative 12x equals this over here is going to give us a negative 24. We're going to divide both by negative 12 so that we can get rid of that. And negative 12 over here is going to come out to x equals negative negative. We're dividing, so it's going to be positive 2 would be the correct answer. x equals 2. How would you check that answer? I'm not going to take the time to check it. The check is in your book. So uh, if you want to look at that check, you can go back and look in your book. That check is on page 439 in your book. But how would you do it? Well, you take that 2 right there that we got, that solution, and you plug it all the way back into this original. So let me get rid of these things. So everywhere that you see an X, you would write a 2. Okay, So you would get rid of the X's and you'd put a 2 in its place. Then you would solve it all out. And what you get is you end up getting that the two things are equal. Well, you know what? Let's just do it since we're here. 2 minus 5 equals negative 3 over 2 plus 4 equals 6 and that equals 2 minus 1 is 1 over 2 minus 4 is minus 2. Now we just need to go ahead and reduce this one right here and that's going to give us if we divide both by 3 that's going to give us 1 over 2 and it's going to be negative 1 over 2. This is also negative 1 over 2, so that does equal. So there you go. There's your check. That's how you check those. Now, if you come up with something wrong there, then you know you've got to go back and fix it. So that's solving as a proportion. Let's go ahead, and I said that a lot of times that's the easier way to do it, and I, I do believe that. But there's certain times where it's not as easy. Now, look at this. Why can't we do it as a proportion this time? Well, look, we have this binomial over here. We have this plus sign. How are we going to do this as a proportion? It's going to get complicated if we try to do this as a proportion. So what we're, what we're going to do on this one is we're going to do the LCD method of, of this one. So let's find the LCD of this. What we want to do is we want to factor this out. So we're going to factor the X, and we get X minus 2. So what is our LCD? Well, look, we have 1x, so let me write the LCD over here. We have an x, and then we have a pair of x minus 2. So x times x minus 2. That's our LCD. Let me, um, I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to put it up there, so it's just under that, x times x minus 2. And that way it's fully factored, and that will help us as we go through it. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to take this LCD and we want to multiply it times everything. And what you're going to see is that's going to cancel all of these denominators. And it's going to make it a whole lot easier to work with. Okay, So that's going to cancel, cancel right there. We're going to end up with 2 times x. So we get 2x plus that cancels with that. And we get this. We need to distribute that. So we get 2x minus 4 equals, and look what happens here. Cancel, 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 cancel. That all cancels out to 4. Now you might look at this and say, oh, wow, I can handle this. And I know you can. This is not too bad right here. Um, what we're going to do is just follow our, we're going to combine our like terms. So that right there, uh, follow your order of operation. We'll get 4x. This, we're going to move to the other side, and we're going to get 8 over there equals 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and we're going to get x equals 2. 
x equals 2. Yeah, now you're saying, do you get x equals 2 for all of these? No, you don't get x equals 2 for all of these. But in these first two, it did. they did both come out to x equals 2. So we could um, now take that x equals 2. We could plug it back into the original. Where's the original? Well, it's way up here. Um, sorry about that. Um, where's the original? It's way up here, and I've got all this stuff written through it, so I'm trying to erase some of this stuff so you can see where the original equation went, and there it is, okay? And so what we would do is we would plug our 2 back in here to the original equation. Everywhere that you see an x, you would put a 2, and you would end up with, and it would check out, and you can see that in your book where they do check it, okay? Um... All right, let's do one more. Okay, I want to make sure that you understand this. This is on page number 440. Page 440. Oh, missed something right there. There we go. All right, this is on page four. <clears throat> this example is on page 440. Let's go ahead and look there in your book, page 440. I'll be doing it on the screen. You can be watching in the book as I solve it. Now, what's going on here is, again, we have a plus sign. The proportional method's not really going to work well for us when we have this plus sign. It's going to be very complicated. What works better here is the LCD method. What we need to do first is factor this x squared. That is a difference of two squares. And so that factors out to x minus 3, x plus 3. Let's go ahead and rewrite that up there so that it's a little bit easier for us as we're solving this out. x minus 3, x plus 3. I think by now, hopefully, that you can recognize pretty quickly what the LCD is of this one. Look, there's 1x plus 3, there's 1x plus 3. So LCD is going to be x plus 3. And notice there's an x minus 3 and an x minus 3, so 1x minus 3. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're going to divide or we're going to multiply everything by that LCD. So let's go ahead and everywhere we're going to put the x plus 3, x minus 3. And that's all going to be over 1. So these are fractions. All right, over 1. Now what happens is hopefully, if we did it right, the fractions are all going to cancel. Cancel x plus 3, cancel with that x plus 3. So now we have this, and we just distribute that x through there, and we get x squared minus uh, 3x plus um, then x minus 3 cancels here, and we just distribute a 1 through, but nothing changes, just x plus 3. Notice our denominators are all canceling out. That's what we're looking for. Over here, we're going to cancel out the x minus 3 and the x plus 3. They both cancel. All we're left with is our 6. So that's a positive 6. So that's an equals 6. There we go. Everything canceled out, and now we are ready to go. What are we ready to do? We're ready to combine our like terms. Well, here's some like terms right here. We have x squared minus 3x plus x is going to be minus 2x plus 3 equals 6. Now, when we get it to this point, you should recognize something right there. This looks like a quadratic equation. How do we solve quadratic equations? Do you remember last chapter? Last chapter, we learned four methods to solving quadratic equations. Let's try factoring. I think factoring is the easiest way. So we're going to move the 6 over here. We're going to put it in standard form by subtracting 6 from both sides. We're going to get x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. We have it in standard form. Now let's see if we can factor it. x and x. Our signs are going to be, they, they both equal 0, by the way. Our signs are going to be positive, negative, because we have negative, negative. And um, we're going to put the bigger number in, in the negative spot. So 3 and 1. You can check it if you want. That gives me a negative 3x here. That gives me a positive x or 1x. And that does give me my negative 2x. That's what I'm looking for. Those are my factors. Notice that they're both set equal to 0. 
So we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. We're going to get x equals negative 1. That's one answer. We're going to add 3 to both sides over here, and we're going to get x equals 3. That's our second answer. All right, there you go. And that is the solution. Now, one more thing, and then we'll be done. Sometimes, and we've talked about this before, sometimes you can end up with what's called extraneous solutions. What is an extraneous solution? That means it does not check. In other words, we can plug that in back into our original. Even though we did everything right, we factored it right, it solved right, but we can plug it back in and sometimes they don't check. Let's check both of these, okay? Let's check the negative one and let, then let's check the, the positive three. So how do we check it? We plug it back into the original. Okay, so what's the original? I wrote it back out here just to just save some time. We Everywhere we see an X, we are going to plug in a negative 1. We'll try negative 1 first, okay? So we're going to get negative 1 over negative 1 plus 3 plus 1 over negative 1 minus 3 equals 6 over negative 1 squared like that minus 9. And now we just got to solve it to see if it works. Okay. So what is this? Negative 1 over what's negative 1 plus 3? That is 2 plus, all right, again here we get 1 over negative 4, and that's going to equal 6 over what's 1, negative 1 squared is positive 1, 1 minus 9 is minus 8, 6 over negative 8. Um, Again, this is kind of a little bit challenging, but not too bad. We have What we have to do is get a common denominator. Our common denominator is going to be 8. One way that you could do this um, is actually, um, it's actually negative 8 is our common denominator. We could multiply everything by negative 8. That will cancel everything out. So here we get cancel to a 1, that cancels to a negative 4. Negative 4 um, times negative 1 is negative 4, plus this cancels out. Um, both of these cancel, that's going to be positive, um, and that cancels out to a 1 down here and to a 2 here. So 2 plus, or 2 times 1 is 2, and then that's going to equal here. It's going to cancel out, and we're going to get 6. Oh, we had a negative and a negative here, so that should be a positive. I messed that up. So positive 4 plus positive 2 equals positive 6. Positive 6 equals positive 6. That one checks. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and rewind all of that. I'm going to take all that off, and now we're going to plug in the 3. We're going to try the 3. We're going to say, okay, so the negative 1 works. Does the 3 work? Well, I don't know. Let's go ahead and plug in the 3. So back to where we started from. And now we're going to plug in the 3 everywhere that you see an x. So we're going to get 3 over 3 plus 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 3 equals 6 over 3 squared minus 9. Now, very quickly, we're going to see something happen, and hopefully you recognize what, what's going on here. Let's solve this one, and we get 3 over 6 plus what happens right here? 1 over 0 equals 6 over 9 minus 9 is 0. All right, what happens when we get a 0 in the denominator? No solution. We can't solve that, so we have a problem. Whenever you get that zero coming out in a denominator, basically we say that is an error, that's a math error, that can't be true. And so as soon as that happens, what we can do is we can look at this and we can say this three right here is extraneous. This three does not solve it. In other words, this three is not part of the solution set. Okay, only negative one is part of the solution set. All right, that's all I got for you. Hope you learned something. If you missed anything and there was a lot there, rewind it, watch it again, watch it two or three times maybe um, while you're practicing. Go to these practice problems and try some of these and watch the video as you're doing those and try to work through some of this. It's complicated, it takes a lot of steps, but you know how to do all this, so take your time, okay? 
you have any questions, drop them in the comments. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.